Well, first of all, how many places are you going to come to where you're standing in a store? And right now we are looking out on Pewaukee Lake. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is just huge in itself. One of the things that makes a town a town is the neighborhoods. Tell me mm -hmm. a little bit about the neighborhoods of Pewaukee. So first of all, people get confused. There's two Pewaukees, but we call it the Pewaukee community. <laughs> there is the village of Pewaukee and the city of Pewaukee. Okay. The village of Pewaukee is older communities, um, older homes, except when you get onto the lake. Then, of course, you've got the you know million dollar homes there. Sure. The city of Pewaukee has got just a ton of different neighborhoods. Um, they've got, you know, their neighborhoods with newsletters and do fun things and, you know, have parties and they'll have all of that. Okay. Um, but then you can come here and you can find, you know, the smaller homes, the, the more older traditional types of, of neighborhoods. And as far as price ranges of homes are concerned, do you know about what that range might be? Um, right now, the median price is about 300000 313000 okay. So it is, unfortunately, a little bit, you know, on the higher side. but. Okay. You know, we're part of Lake Country, which is about 10 different communities that have a ton of different lakes out here. And I think that that kind of drives up the price people want to live out here. It's, sure. it's just a gorgeous place. Cool, one of the things I would love for you to tell me about is the history of Pewaukee. Whatever you got for me, give me some background on that, please. Asa Clark was actually the first settler that came here, and we're really lucky we have the building where he first lived is still okay. here. Cool. And that's the Pewaukee Historical Society now. It used to be the place where people would get ice from, so they'd come in with the big machines, okay. cut out the blocks of ice, and then they would take it into Milwaukee and stuff. It's traditionally been a resort town. We're on the upside right now, and we've got a lot, lot of great things going on here. Nice, a lot of things are growing. It's just different here. People are just awesome, and um, they love the community. They want to give back. Uh, we were just going over our volunteer list, and so far we have 100, almost 150 volunteers who just volunteer for us. Okay. And every time I ask them why, they're, well, we love the community. We want to give back. And so I think that that kind of drives me. It just makes me want to, you know, keep continuing to make Pewaukee a better place. Tell me a little bit more about giving back. Now, that's something that we always love to know is how does the community give back? So you mentioned that you do. Yes. Uh, and through your organization, you do. What yes. does that look like? So uh, about 15 years ago, we were working with the police department doing something called Shop with Cops. Okay. And one of the teachers was there and a little girl walked in and she goes, oh, I forgot, I have to go buy her a pair of pants. And I'm like, what are you buying her a pair of pants for? Well, so I went to find out that teachers were spending between $1,500 and $2,000 a year helping the kids in their class who were low income. Okay. And we said, forget it, That's, <laughs> we cannot have that. So we started Community Connection. And now what we do for the past 15 years is we do, with United Way, all of the backpacks for kids. Okay. Uh, we do winter clothing items, we do regular clothing items. We do just unusual things, like there's a young man right now who doesn't have money for a cap and gown. So we're paying for the cap and gown. Okay. Um, we help pay for the milk for the kids who are for, have free lunches. Just a variety of things. If somebody is in need, we're there to help them. We work with the fire department. Um, if there's a major disaster, okay. we'll kind of step in um, along with Red Cross and like, you know, purchase some more backpack things for the kids and some clothing items and stuff like that. Really, it's endless. I mean, if there's a need out there, people contact us and, and we try to help. Take care of it. Yeah. Sounds like you have a pretty big donor base as well, not just volunteers, but maybe donors as well. Is that a, um, a fair statement? For this, statement? yes. We work with churches and we work with um, some civic groups and okay. they've been very generous. And then when I put out a plea, we get it. it I mean, we've, we've, never, we've never had a time where we could not do something okay. because of that. So, I mean, community here is very, very generous. When we were talking about uh, the history and really your background, you mentioned three pillars mm -hmm. of your organization. Mm -hmm. Please talk about mm -hmm. those and then land on one of the, I know one of those is events. Tell yes. me about your favorite event after sure. you talk about the three sure. pillars. So we, our three pillars is really what we live by. Everything we do has to fit into this. So the three pillars are uh, building community, fostering business, and producing events. 
and the producing events part is the fun part. Okay. <laughs> so we actually, the last weekend of July every year, we have a gigantic party. We close the street here. It's called Taste of Lake Country. And we have uh, 10 different restaurants coming in from burgers all the way up to Weissgerber's prime rib sandwiches. Uh, we put up a huge stage on the beach. We have bands from Nashville coming in and we average about 25,000 people for the weekend. So tell me about the local businesses. We're standing in a little shop called Lake and Pine with some very cool stuff. Mm -hmm. But what about the other organizations and businesses locally that are right around here? Tell me about them. Well, first of all, how many places are you going to come to where you're standing in a store? And right now we are looking out on Pewaukee Lake. I mean, that is that is just huge in itself. And so we were very fortunate. Um, about 20 years ago, this building was built here. And since then, it has just kind of been a chain reaction. Other businesses have been built here. Other remodeling has been done. So we really are building up a, a great downtown here. We're really getting plenty of retail now. We've got lots of, of great restaurants. We've got a coffee shop, we've got a wine bar, uh, we've got a bike shop here. That's another big thing that people love to do here is we've got bike rides that happen all the time out of, out of Velo City. And so you'll see bicycles everywhere. You'll see people jogging down here. You'll see, it's just a flurry of activity. It's not just the shopping. People come down here. It's like a living center is basically, basically what it is. And we're, it was a few years that we were just known just summertime, but we really are trying now with the more businesses in here and um, getting people down here all year round and just making it making it a fun place to, to come to. What about the just the essence of Lake Country living, right? I know the Lake Country Trail is close by. I'm sure that also impacts Velo City mm -hmm. and the biking and the running and all of that. Mm -hmm. But what is unique to Lake Country living? I don't know any other place that has the aesthetics that we do out in Lake Country. I mean, you I don't think you drive more than four or five miles and there's a lake. Um, it's just the scenery out here, the feel of it, the you know, the beautiful homes, the, the just the atmosphere that, that is more vibrant. You know, people people like to come and run. They like to come in and bike, go hiking, go walking. We've got great trails. Um, for people to um, do their activities on. It, there's a lot of uniqueness out here. Of Positively Pewaukee's impact in the area, we've talked about a handful of things. Mm -hmm. What's something that we should know that I haven't asked you about? I think the main thing about Pewaukee really is the people. And um, just it, when you come out here in the summertime or even in the winter, and you see people out here, they're always friendly. They always will stop and talk with you. We take care of the flowers down here and we've got a little golf cart that we've named Pee Wee. Okay. <laughs> so we've got volunteers that will be out watering. And there's never a time when somebody doesn't stop and talk to them and say, hey, thanks for doing this. Tell us more about why you're doing it and stuff. It's just, it, it's such a, a, a tight knit community. And I think that really matters to people nowadays, especially with everything that we're going through. I think people just want to feel like their place is their place. Um, we've got a coffee shop down here that's constantly busy. It's got regulars coming in there all the time. But but I think through all most of Lake Country, I think we feel this way. It's just, it's the people. And that that's what makes a big difference here. The people. Yeah. Now, when the people see Pee Wee, how do they know that it's <laughs> volunteers that are working? Pee -wee? They don't, they don't. Okay. And that's why they'll stop and then, um, We've trained our volunteers of what to say and stuff, but we've got Positively Pewaukee's logo on, on the cart and stuff too. But that's also inspired people to volunteer for us too because they see, you know, it's not just events, it's caring for the community too. Got and it. I think that's a, that's a big part. I think that's what people really want to do. They want to do something tangible that they can see. Hey, I planted this, I weeded this, that, you know, that's, it's successful because of me. Right, right, absolutely. I think that, that having that knowledge that it is volunteer based as opposed to the assumption that it's paid mm -hmm. is huge as well. Mm -hmm. There's investment, like you said. Exactly. In the it, yes. Well, thank you so much. I really sure. appreciate thank your you time. Thank you for coming out here. Yeah, absolutely. It does remind me, again, it, a throwback to the European look, mm -hmm. you know, almost like the Ikea and things like that, exactly. where it's just very exactly. even lines, which is what this was modeled after, which exactly. was the European village. Right. So They were beautiful. called garden communities mm -hmm. in England, and um, 
And again, uh, the houses were built close to the road so that you would have this big green space behind you. So over the years, um, the houses have uh, increased in value. It became kind of an in thing to live in one of these and a lot of people bought them and remodeled them extensively. We were very grateful to find one and we were able to purchase it that was not remodeled. Greendale community is so generous and they are so proud of their village and just they and enjoying each other. Here you know, so as, much. absolutely, everybody loves the it. The walking paths. No, no child in Greendale has to cross a busy street. They can take the walking paths to school. It's safe. Um, people just love that community feeling, the village feeling. We've had people who had parents who were from England, and when they came to visit, they said, we feel so much at home. It feels like a village, you oh, know. Yeah, and, really right, so right. So um, today, we find ourselves living in a pretty hot commodity. Greendale is a very much um, in-demand area, and we work hard to keep it this way. March, I, as we're looking around, I see a lot of these photographs, it's just like the one that's showing a picture of this kitchen, or what looks like this kitchen. So can you tell me a little bit about when you were doing the renovation, you mentioned that you had a lot of historical guidelines that you were following. So tell we, me a little bit about that. We did, and a lot of our resource comes from great pictures of what the houses looked like, how they were furnished in the 1930s, and we tried to follow their guidelines a lot. That and the fact that we did have people who lived in originals when they were little children, and they remember a lot of the details, so we were very appreciative of that. This kitchen is all original. Everything that's here was here, put in by the government in the 1930s. The cabinets are metal, and we had to have them refurnished, uh, refurbished and repainted, but we were happy to um, have one of our volunteers came forth and did that, so we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I just love this decor in here. Can you tell me about it? Well, it's very unique. The style is called Art Modern. It was an architectural style that only lasted about 10 years in the 1930s. And um, it's hard to find pieces today. We hunted at thrift shops and antique shops for things and were very surprised, pleasantly surprised to find out that the village of Greendale had stored some of the furniture they used for the model home in the 1930s. Oh the furniture was provided by the U.S. government and they closed the model home and kept the furniture in storage up in a loft at our Department of Public Works. It does remind me, again, a throwback to the European look, mm -hmm. you know, almost like the Ikea and things like that, exactly. where it's just very exactly. even lines, which is what this was modeled after, which was the European village. Right. So They were beautiful. called garden communities mm -hmm. in England. And, um, and again, uh, the houses were built close to the road so that you would have this big green space behind you. And, um, they are connected by walking paths that are rather narrow, and that was done on purpose. They wanted the people to move into this space and get to know each other and become friendly. And so the paths were made uh, more narrow so that as you're walking down a path, if you encountered somebody, you had to stop and say have hello. An interaction, mm -hmm. right? It, it became uh, really a wonderful sense of camaraderie, and, and it worked. Mm -hmm. the, our little experiment, or, or the little experiment of the 30s worked, putting all these people together into this rather closed village, and it worked. And I believe from a historical perspective, it really helped the community, those who were able to be a part of it, kind of come out of the Great Depression, probably feel, you know, a little better about life, happier, have that sense of community, you know, we can do this, we can rebuild. I, I think the feeling of uh, raising a family in Greendale in the 
late 30s into the 40s and 50s certainly worked because we hear over and over again people who raised their children, the children went off to school, went to college, got married, started a family and guess where they wanted to live? They wanted to come back to Greendale so that their children could have the same kind of life that they had the same kind of upbringing that they had, they experienced in Greendale. That, that's quite a testament to how well it did work. And you being a Greendalian yourself, is that what you call it? Well, a Green, yeah, a Greendalian. Yes. <laughs> a Greendaler, no, Green a Greendaler. Um, uh, 35 years I lived in Greendale, so I consider myself a newbie because there are people, our office manager, was in the first kindergarten class and so she was a green dealer for a long time longer than me and we run into people all the time we talk with people all the time who have been here 50 60 years um, that's not unusual at all even in the short amount of time you've been here 35 years i what do you think is your perception of the community we kind of hinted on that that people do even if they maybe go away to go to school or something, they always want to come back home to right, Greendale. They do. So with what is your sense of of that community and how has the community grown maybe to adapt to you know to more modern? The downtown had a facelift in the nineties and um, the feeling of living in an original just got to be more and more popular. It got to be such a, a wanted thing. And people started coming here. I don't know if they want to get away from the hustle and bustle of a big city and, and the big world, because Greendale's tucked away down here. You could drive up and down 76th Street or Loomis Road, and if you don't know where it is, you could miss it. <laughs> But once you come down in here, people really seem to relish the feeling of being able to walk into the village to do some shopping or uh, have a dinner or lunch, breakfast, stop for coffee, um, that the schools are nearby, the kids can come to the library after school. The events in Greendale are so loved and looked forward to by everybody. Well, I think that Greendale is going to be here having all of these community events and just embracing life as a community and Besides, they're going to be here for a long time and no matter what happens you're going to always come back.